Hi. I'm going to have a little review of the small account that I've been doing this week. Roll the intro. Tell you all about it. Hi, welcome to the channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Langers and I am the Scruffy Trader. And what I'm trying to do is kind of put trading in the real world. So if that sounds good, please click the little subscribe button and the bell icon. It genuinely motivates me to do more of these videos for you. And also if you've got any comments and questions, I'm easy found, just check the description or drop a comment below. So what am I doing in this video? Well, this video is really just a recap of where I'm up to with a small account I've been growing this month. And it's been slow and steady, been very careful with the trades that I've taken. And the reason being is, when you're on a micro account, if you get it wrong, you have nowhere to go. Because if one trade runs away from you, it wipes out the account. So, I've had to be incredibly patient and incredibly disciplined. The dynamic duo. Holy, here we go again, Batman. Sorry. Do like pop culture, I am a giant kid. But if you've come here and you think you're going to turn £200 into a living wage within a month because you've been seeing this dickhead. You ding dong! You're on the wrong channel. You see, I've done Forex and trading for a very, very long time. I was taught it in a former business that I had where I needed to forward purchase currency to buy containers in foreign lands. It was different to the way I trade now, but the principles were the same. And one of the principles that has definitely changed between then and now is the emotional side and in the series that I've done about growing a small account I did do a video on emotions because they are probably what's going to make or break you as a trader you see when you open your computer on a morning you have an instant urge to trade but you have to fight that urge and trade when it's time is right. You see, this week, one of the reasons I'm doing this recap is, it's been really tough. I haven't done a lot of trades this week. And there's a number of factors as to why. One, I've been incredibly busy. Uh, just recently set a Telegram group up for, for you guys that are in the Scruffy Squad, and that took quite a bit of time to get motivated. And then obviously the computer's binging and banging constantly, and I need to, address what they're talking about. It was good fun though guys, I really enjoyed it. Um, but also the setups weren't there either. And for all I could see them in other markets, I didn't have the funds to be able to trade them. Because when you're dealing with a micro account, you can only deal with a certain amount of products. I haven't got the luxury of being able to look over 28 pairs, God knows how come many commodities, all the indices, because the account can't take it. It's still in the growing phase. So I was limited by what I could trade as well. And I did notice when I've been speaking to various guys, whether it's in the Facebook group, the Telegram, or people that just genuinely message me anyway, that they always have an itchy trigger finger. They feel they have to trade the moment the computer is switched on. No. Sometimes the money is made sitting on your hands. Friday, for example, I, I took a, a great trade on my proper account on the Aussie dollar. But I waited about five hours for it to come into play. I told the lads earlier in the morning what I was looking at. And I don't like trading on a Friday anyway. I genuinely thought it would have dipped in straight away. And it didn't. But when it came, it did exactly what I said it would do. But I had to wait for it. And that was the key element. Waiting. Patience. 
because if you can't be patient, trading will probably tear you a new one very quickly. Um, because the markets are erratic, but you can see patterns in them if you watch them. Okay, Don't try and catch every wave. Get a trade idea, watch for it, wait till it gets to the extreme, then enter the market, but let the market come to you. If you try and chase the market, the chances are you'll get picked up and the market will run away, hit your stop, then it'll turn round and come back. Happens all the time. And that's because you're too anxious to get in the trade. Let the candle close out. Just read it. See if it's at the bottom third or the top third, depending on which direction you're going in. And place your order away from the price. So the price must take you into the trade. All right? If you just open up and go, yep. Yeah, I'm here, I'm ready, click. Chances are you're going to get burnt. All right. So that was just a little snippet from this week. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump on the screen, just a few seconds going through the figures, because it's been an interesting ride this last couple of weeks. Um, I'm very pleased with how it's grown. And I know when you see it, you'll think, it's not a lot of money. But tell me a bank that's going to give you this return in a few weeks. And I'll happily put all of my money into that bank. But at the moment, I've not found one. So I have to increase my net worth myself on the markets. So come with me and let's have a quick look, see where we are. And then I'll do the final summary next Saturday and we'll see how the weeks, the week, how the month has ended up. Okay. And hopefully we might have turned a small account into a tradable account within a month. Okay. Come with me. Okay guys. So like I was saying, just a, a little bit of a recap of what we've done this week. It hasn't really lit the world on fire to be honest. But let's have a look. So at the beginning of the month, we started with £200. Not a lot of money, you know, but it's enough to get you moving. The only problem with it is, like I said, if you make a mistake, you have nowhere to go with it. And especially at the beginning, because I was on a, a risk factor around 10% per trade and that was just to allow it to have a little bit of movement and room because tight stops would kill it off but I also had to be able to be disciplined enough to kill off trades and talking of discipline oh how good are you is this for me it is what are you want? Okay. nothing it's cold I thought it might warm you up it is cold it is it is absolutely horrid outside it's um i do like autumn a lot of the time you know when it's sort of the sun's still out and the trees are a nice color but the day it is horrid it's like a proper winter's day but i got my coffee because we all know scruffy likes a coffee he likes winky as well but he does love what he does for a living in the charts. And as I was saying, because the risk had to be on the high side and I had no other choice because certain products, they're trading at 50p and you need a 20, 25 pip stop. It was gonna be 10% of the, the pot. But I've whittled that away. I've got it down to 5%, which I'm quite, comfortable with I'll go with five percent and also I've been scaling I have been caught this looks great at a hundred percent but I have been stopped out and as you can see it's like 71 p's and 21 p's that was a stop out as well I should have marked that and as you come further down stopped out stopped out and the reason why it's a hundred percent 
hit rate is because when I see a market reversing, I've just killed the trade simply because I've got nowhere to go with it. I couldn't allow a trade to go against me and wipe out the account. So I had to manage it. It's taken an awful lot of time over the last couple of weeks and I'm jumping between this screen, this screen and that one, watching all of my trades at the same time. It's very difficult. And of all of my trading, this has been the hardest because I have to micromanage it all the time. Anyway, so cut a long story short, we, we pulling in a reasonable amount. I've done 41 positions in total. Uh, I haven't lost one of them yet, even though there is some stop outs, but that's just because I've killed it before it went into a loss. We have an average of 9.5 pips, which I need to work on. But if you bear in mind, you've got your stop outs as well. So they'll come in at sort of like 0.1 of a pip or even one pip. It pulls the average down. I'm increasing the bid size each time I go. Um, again, it's all part of a compound plan. You've seen me do this before. I'm just working to this. As the account can take it and the positions are good, I'll edge the positions up to get more money. And it's pulled in a gross sort of figure of 338.96. I can live with that. I really can. And you'll see there's like a little bit of a discrepancy between the profit and loss and that. And it's because you pay a little bit of interest. That's all. Okay. But the balance has grown substantially. You know, I'm quite happy with that grow. And I've taken out into a physical bank account, 55 pounds. And that again, I monitor it down the side, which is 16% of that. So when I'm doing this for my living, I normally work on around 10% of the take. So here I'm actually higher. So I could calm that down a little bit. And Overall, I'm quite pleased. And we're going into the last week. I would like to see it doubled, but I never bank on anything. As long as I go from zero to one, I have had a good day. And that's how I look at the markets. I'm not, I don't work on set percentages. I don't work on set pips. I take what the market can give me. And sometimes you'll see me, well, all the time, you'll see me with zones when I'm trading. If that price moves into that zone and my take profits in there, the second that moves the opposite direction, I pull it out. Because the one thing I don't want is an air kiss. And all that is, is where the price goes to just within your take profit and then decides to go the other way. If it's near enough there, I'll kill it. And I'm not bothered about losing a couple of pips because you've heard me say it so many times. I'd rather have 70% of a winner than 100% of a loser. And it's as simple as that. And these greens, what you're looking at here, is the idea is each trade is to increase the balance by 1%. So that, that's the whole basis so the more greens i have there the happier i am take money out into a physical bank account safe and if i need to refund the broker i have to think about it and if i don't need to i won't okay keep it well documented what i'm doing which is here you know this column is just how much i take out the markets, the trade, whether I'm long or short, my mood, which is something to, to work on. And it goes back to what I was saying earlier on about the emotional side. Sometimes I make bad choices and I'll keep a note as to whether I was tired, in a good mood, whether I was angry, agitated, whatever. And you start seeing little patterns. 
All right. And then just little notes that I put to the side so I can go revisit it. And as long as I know the date, I can go in, check where I got in, where I got out, and I can replay the trade because I record them anyway. It's where the channel started. So all in all, we're looking good. All right. I'm quite, quite pleased. So as I said, it was just a, a very quick update on where we are. We have grown 68% in a couple of weeks. We have added a net P&L of 136.98. And I've paid myself 55 pounds out of it. So not only has my bank balance grown, my brokerage account has grown. And if I continue this next month, I've got funds to reinvest and I've had a treat because my whole goal was that. It was a pie every day on five day working week. So that's 25 pound a week, 100 pound a month, smashed it. And I've got a week left. So happy days. Okay, guys, if you've got any questions, by all means, drop it in the comments below. If you want to send me a message, all my details are in the description and I'll happily talk to you okay so I'm going to enjoy my coffee and then I'm going to go watch Star Wars because it's the weekend and we always watch Star Wars on a weekend no I asked her earlier on about the bikini she's having none of it but I live in hope Christmas is coming <sighs> I was going to have a moment but I got wrong on yesterday's moment because Winky wasn't in it. <laughs> oh dear. I'll, I'll, I'll have a private moment. It was a good one. <laughs> Remember, guys, do what you love and the money will follow. See you all in the next one.